And along the way, I have learned some things because I knocked my head into that wall a hundred times a day trying to figure this business out. And um, with radio, it is a good old boys club. And it's, you know, it's one of those businesses where I figured out the hard way that I just had to figure out a different way to play the game. And I think I beat them. And I can say that because they're not in the room right now. But I actually would say that to their face, and it's fine. They know they're a good old boys club. It is the industry of radio, and women in radio are news girls. And my very first job in radio, my co-host said to me, cross your legs and giggle, and you'll go very far in this business. And I'm like, well, that's not me, so let's figure out another way to do this. And I did, and it worked. So uh, I ended up here in Boise, and Mike and I have this dynamic. And first I should say, should say bleh, if I can speak, when Shelly approached me and said, I'd love for you to speak, and Lisa had asked me and said, I want you to speak at the Women Ignite Idaho event, do you have a topic? Immediately I'm like, perception versus reality, done. I knew it the minute they asked me. And it wasn't so that I could have a platform up here and say, guess what, the girl on the radio isn't who you think she is. That's not why I'm here today. Well, I'm here to speak about that is because that it's, a, it's been a struggle for me, but I figured out how to make it work for me. But just because I'm in the public eye doesn't mean you don't have the same thing going on in your world. And I'm gonna show you how to make that work for you to your advantage instead of banging your head against the wall going, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair, because there's a way around that wall. So I was super excited to talk about perception versus reality. So let me just start with the perception of Kate McGuire. And you don't have to clap or raise your hands because I already know there's some people out there. Anyone shocked that I am not overweight, blonde, and smoking right now? Yes, I love that. No, but I'm not talking about the physical perception of me. Um, the perception of Kate McGuire, if you listen to the show, is that I am always partying, I am always drunk after work, and that I am absolutely certifiably crazy, and I've got a thousand men running through my life. And guess what? That's done me very well in my career. In my career, we haven't gotten to my personal life yet. That is not the truth, but the truth is, I have crazy things that happen to me, and I do like to drink a little, and I date boys, and I go on crazy vacations, and hopefully that entertains you for the eight minutes that I get you every morning. If I get you for 20, I'm ecstatic. And that's just because of the commute time in town, right? Because everyone else would listen like nonstop, right? So, but if I, if I tell you what I did last night, I guarantee you don't want to hear it Monday morning. I went and got my nails done, and I was in bed by 8.30 reading my book that I haven't finished from vacation yet because i got to get to the end. And I read one page and I fell asleep. And then I got up at 5.30 this morning and I did some laundry. That doesn't make good radio. That's boring. So what makes good radio is being in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, having my cab driver basically kidnap me and propose to me. That happened to me. That's funny. And when they hired me at Mix 106, or when I actually got into radio, even before Mix 106, they told me I needed to be engaging, I needed to be informative, and I needed to entertain you. So I hope I do that with the tiny little parts of my life that are crazy. I have a crazy family. My mom literally is certifiably crazy in a funny way, and I love her, but she gives me the best radio material. And <laughs> so God bless my dysfunctional family. And so, you know, when I got into radio, I actually went to college. I went to Colorado State. I wanted to be a writer. I have the like biggest passion, I'm gonna write the great American novel. Well, my counselor said to me, Kate, you can't graduate and write the great American novel, let's get you started somewhere else and we'll lead you in that direction so you have a paycheck when you graduate. I literally stumbled into radio. The campus flooded, I was working at the campus television station, hated it, and then they combined the radio and TV and I'm like, oh my God, we have a radio station here? Cool. And I figured out I could tell my stories versus write them and voila, here I have a radio career. So. The thing is though, I, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, I have the ability to take moments in my life and make them these hilarious stories. And I, all I wanna do in the morning is entertain you. It gives me a high when I get an, an email and someone's like, oh my gosh, Kate, I was crying, I was laughing so hard. And if I reach that one person with one funny story I have, or maybe my mom's not the only one out there that's a little woohoo. Yeah, someone can relate to that. So I try to tell the stories that people can relate to. That stuff is where I realized, hey, 
I'm going to take that part and I'm going to focus on that and I'm going to build a career off of that.